Hey everybody, welcome to News by Muse. We have a great interview today for the Herbalife 24 Triathlon, which is this Sunday here in LA. We have Rudy Garcia Tolson. He's a multiple time Olympic gold medalist in the Paralympics. And uh, he's going to be a part of the PTO Pro-Am uh, this Sunday. What, what was the challenge and what's the reason why a triathlon now? Sure, sure. Well, uh, you know, for me, this is a, uh, this is going to be an awesome weekend. Uh, I, I get to do a triathlon and uh, I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm doing a, a relay as part of uh, uh, the PTO's uh, uh, challenge athlete relays that they're put together with some of the professional athletes as well. Uh, so I, I get the, got the easy part. I'm only doing a 5k run, which is only three miles. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as you said, uh, my, my, my sport is swimming, but you know, in the mean in between, I've been also been doing triathlon since I was a, a very, very young athlete since, uh, you know, I was nine, 10 years old is when I did my first sprint triathlon. So triathlons for me has always been something that uh, I kind of do on the side as like a little cross training and, you know, something to switch it up and, you know, swimming five to 10,000 meters a day. So, yeah, because uh, like I used to be a runner, so I, I ran a couple marathons when I was younger. Yeah. And you look at a triathlon, that's a completely different beast and a completely different animal. Even on a, even when you're tagging off in a triathlon, doing a, a swim and a run. Yeah. It's still mentally and physically exhausting. How do you prepare mentally for a triathlon sure. like this? Sure. Well, you know, there's many different distances for a triathlon. And uh, the, the triathlon that we're going to be doing this weekend in LA is uh, more of a sprint distance. So it's a, it's a quick, pretty quick race. Uh, it, it typically people who do it all by themselves take about an hour or two to finish. Uh, so mentally, you know, it's uh, not that long of a day. Um, you know, the, the key in triathlon is staying in the moment and, and focusing on how you feel in the moment because, you know, you know, when you when you agree uh, and, and and find yourself on the starting line of an Ironman triathlon, which is uh, 140 miles total, uh, that's it's a whole different ballgame. So you know the name of the game is to stay present and uh, to to pay attention to your nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a race like that we have this weekend coming up, uh, it's just going to be a a, a sprint. Uh, you know, uh, fast as you can go until the end and uh it should be a good time because we're all we're doing a relay so we're gonna have a lot of other challenge athletes out there doing the run doing the swim uh really showing everybody that you know yeah i am disabled i am missing my legs but i'm still out here to beat you and to show everybody that you know the, the real disability in life is a negative attitude yeah and i agree i mean a lot of it is mental yeah uh I just, I look at you, you, what you do and especially with the Paralympics and what you've done in the Paralympics is just amazing. Like Thank not you. many, I, I watched the Paralympics cause I love seeing, I'm a, I'm, I'm an athlete at heart. I've always sure. will be. And I love seeing the sport. Rudy, tell us a little bit about how you got started and uh, how you got from being a kid to Paralympics. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so for me, my, my journey started really when I was born and, you know, it didn't start with, uh, with the goals and dreams of, of finishing an Ironman triathlon or going to the Paralympics. It was really, you know, just, I just wanted to be a kid, you know, uh, for me, when I was born, my legs were webbed at the knee. So I was unable to stretch my legs. I was unable to, to walk. And, um, you know, the, the doctors right away suggested to my parents to amputate my legs, uh, but they, they refused. They didn't want me to come back later in my life and, and question why uh, I'm missing my legs. So uh, from when I was born to about the age of five years old, I went through more than 15 operations and, and all of them were were geared towards trying to fix and save my legs, uh, to stri straighten up my leg uh, without having to amputate them. But unfortunately, after, you know, growing up in the hospital, um, you know, for me, it was a, a very black and white, easy decision to tell my parents and the doctors to, uh, to cut my legs off. You know, I, I didn't see it as this big, big question. Uh, I just thought of it as, okay, well, if they cut my legs off, then I, I will probably be able to go home 
home uh, and get out of the hospital hospital and and maybe uh, you know be a kid. Uh, and that that was that was my my you know my thoughts. And so I had my legs amputated at the age of five years old. And shortly after, uh, I really got involved in sports. Uh, swimming was the first sport that I got into prior to having my legs amputated. And uh, I fell in love with it because one, I was able to take my let my prosthetic legs off and jump into the water and and it really it felt free it really felt like i was uh um you know really able to move the way i wanted to and not have to have you know really heavy and uncomfortable legs on to get to get to somewhere uh and and then on top of that i just love the water uh and and you know one of my first goals as a kid was to be a kid with legs you know, everybody referred to me as the boy with no legs, and I wanted to prove them wrong. I wanted to show them that I was more than just a boy with no legs. So uh, after finally accomplishing that goal of beating one kid in the pool, uh, I set my sights on, on the next one, which uh, at the age of eight years old, I told everybody that I wanted to go to the 2004 Paralympic Games. And eight years later, I was able to uh, make that dream a reality and, and really continue on uh, as a professional athlete uh, to where we are here today. Uh, I've done five Paralympics. I've won two gold, two silver, and one bronze medal. And I'm also the first double above the knee amputee to finish an Ironman triathlon. So, you know, starting from a, a very young kid, uh, I was involved in sports, uh, specifically triathlon and swimming. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. And that's such an inspirational story, especially for, for any like anybody because it's it's it shows perseverance and never giving up and i think a lot of people sometimes feel like they need to give up nowadays like oh, wait, oh yeah. I do it i can't do it and yeah stories like yours is like saying no you can do it it doesn't matter what's in front of you you gotta keep pushing forward it's uh it, it's it's an important part of life i think and um you know we all we all have points in our lives where we want to stop uh, we all have points in our lives where we feel like it's too hard and it's better if we just kind of let it go and, and forget about it and do something else. But, you know, I think that some of the great things in life are when you challenge yourself, when you push yourself past the pain and, and, and get to that finish line, whether it's beating one kid with, with, with two legs or getting across an actual finish line in, in, a, in a triathlon. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we all have that ability ability to to push push ourselves now the question is how and 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 of course you know i think a big a big way to do that is to look for look for sources of inspiration look for people who are doing it and 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 try to try to try to uh, you know figure out how, how they're doing it and then, you know, copy them. Uh, you know, another cool way that, that I find inspiration is looking at other challenge athletes around the, around the country, around the world who are living life to the fullest, living life with no limitations and, and really just showing the world that again, the real disability is a negative attitude. Yeah, exactly. And if you can, can you tell us about challenge athletes foundation since you're wearing uh, polo today? Yeah, so the Challenge Athletes Foundation uh, is is really really dear to my heart. I've been involved with the Challenge Athletes Foundation since I was about eight years old. So really, I've grown up with the foundation, uh, and the foundation is uh, twenty five years plus running, uh, based in San Diego. The mission of the Challenge Athletes Foundation is to provide sporting equipment to challenge athletes who want to participate in sports. And as we know, uh, sports is not a luxury. Sports is a right for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're missing limbs or are or in a wheelchair or are visually impaired, whatever the challenge is, there is a way. And with the Challenge Athletes Foundation, we want to provide the equipment needed to get get athletes to the starting line, whether they're young, young kids or, 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 or uh, older, older athletes, it doesn't matter that the goal is to uh, uh, provide the running legs, provide the racing wheelchairs, provide the adaptive equipment needed to ensure that everybody can get to that starting line. And then of course the finish line. Yeah. And it's such a great foundation, especially now where Sports is getting really expensive for families to be able to put their kids to be able to participate in any type of sport nowadays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, 
we see it every day. You know, the, the prostate legs that we see, uh, the high tech, uh, running legs made by Oser, uh, they, you know, one leg can cost upwards of 10 to $20,000. And a lot, a lot of the times the insurance companies will not support, uh, these, these, uh, high quality products because they are, as they say, a luxury yeah. item. And as, as I said, sports is not a luxury. It's a right for everybody. Uh, and, and so when, when someone needs that, uh, that, that $5,000 racing wheelchair or, or a basketball wheelchair to be able to play, play basketball with their family, uh, or with their, their team, you know, the challenge athletes is there and we, 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 you know, the mission is to support athletes around the world. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. And it's awesome work. Uh, two more questions left before we leave. How can people participate and help out the challenge athletes foundation? Absolutely. So we're all over social media, uh, challenge athletes foundation, you know, follow, uh, like, and share our posts. We're always uh, showing uh, a lot of our amazing challenge athletes around the country and around the world doing amazing things. Uh, we just had a, uh, a few of our challenge athletes at the white house just last week, uh, hanging out with, uh, with the president of the United States and, uh, you know, all the challenge athletes were always doing amazing things. So all on social media, and also our website, challengeathletesfoundation.org. Uh, you can find out, um, you know, the upcoming events. Uh, if you feel like you want to come and volunteer at one of our events, there's events all over Southern California, all over Idaho, all over New York uh, area. So we're, we're everywhere. And uh, if you know somebody who might might be able to be helped, might be able to benefit from the Challenge Athletes Foundation, send them our way because we are always looking for uh, new athletes to, to get to the starting line. Awesome. And finally, last question. If people want to come cheer you on and want to be a part and see, see you uh, compete this weekend, how could they, how could they uh, come down? Sure, sure. So uh, you can always go to the Herbalife, Herb, Herbalife uh, 24 try, uh, website. Uh, and you know, this weekend is going to be an amazing, uh, amazing, uh, event. Uh, it's a point to point course to travel on. So, uh, starting there in, in Venice beach and we're traveling, uh, to, on the bike and on the run through the neighborhoods of LA. And, uh, we're going to be finishing at, at LA live there downtown. So, uh, it's really a one of a kind event happening in Los Angeles. You know, LA is the place to be, you know, with the Olympics and parallel Olympics going to be in LA here in six years. Uh, we're just going to see uh, uh, tons of new amazing events like this uh, 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 professional uh, uh, travel organization uh, with Herbalife. And uh, it's just going to be, you know, an amazing, amazing uh, uh, weekend. If you have kids, we recommend you bring them out to the, to the finish line. There's going to be a kid zone. There's a 5k, you can walk it, you can run it. Uh, anybody who's interested in, 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 in checking it out, we recommend recommend you come out and and we're on social media as well uh professional triathlon organization uh urban life uh, to, um, uh la triathlon so uh please look us up and uh we're really excited for this weekend hey rudy thank you so much for being a part of this we're definitely going to get people out to go cheer you on this weekend and don't forget the herbal life 24 pro life well pro pto pro am <laughs> Try out yes. one yeah, this Sunday. It is a mouthful. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> I get what you're saying. It's a mouthful. But don't forget, be a part of it this Sunday in downtown LA from Venice all the way to downtown LA. And thank you, Rudy, for being a part of this. And we look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you for having me. And remember, the real disability is a negative attitude. Thank you.